We finally saw the VIX come up to the 30 level. The last time we saw a spike above the 30 level was back in March of last year. And the S&P 500 lost over 3% in the first couple days of the month. In July, it finished with a small gain of 1.13%. And for the Nasdaq 100, it lost close to 5% in the first couple of days of August and also lost 1.63% uh, for the month of July. And looking on the weekly chart here on the S&P 500, we see that the S&P 500 have been down for three consecutive weeks. Now, the last time that it came down three consecutive weeks, we saw a nice bounce back up. So will we see a bounce come back up next week? There's a high probability of that because also notice here, we saw a nice bounce as well for the following week after three consecutive down weeks. But of course, here over here, it failed to do that. It put in a four consecutive down week. But the NASDAQ 100 had been down four consecutive weeks. And the last time it came down four consecutive weeks, we saw a nice bounce back up. So could we be uh, seeing a bounce for the coming week for the NASDAQ 100? Let's see what the story is that the market is trying to tell us. Let's take a look at the sentiment chart here. We see the VIX is back into this fear zone between 20 and 30. Remember, we uh, saw the uh, VIX spike up close to 30 uh, last week. And also the put call ratio is getting up to this one level where we'll get more put buying than call buying. So definitely we are seeing the market getting a little bit more uh, bearish now. And here we notice that the up-down volume ratio is also uh, getting a lot of selling pressure. Last Friday, we saw over 5 to 1 in favor of the down volume. And as well as the uh, advance and decline, the daily advance decline also show a broad market participation on the downside. Now, although we are still seeing uh, quite a number of stocks making new 52-week high, but also the number of stock of making 52-week low also came back up above the 100 level. And there were 115 stock make new 52-week low on Friday. And the new high, new low is down only to the double digit. Remember before, it was over somewhere around the 200 level. So definitely some of the stocks is starting to show some weakness now. And here on the cumulative advanced decline, we are not seeing as steep of a decline on the uh, AD line comparing to the steepness of the uh, S&P 500 on a closing basis. But again, you know, we're still looking at this positive divergence here that we saw but uh, a few days ago. But again, we're saying that it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to need to be resolved in the uh, near future. And what we could see is the possibility of a little bit of a pullback after this uh, market pullback is completed, then we could possibly see another new high, either from the S&P 500 or from the Dow Jones Industrial. And here in the NASDAQ market, looking at the NASDAQ market, we're also seeing a lot of selling pressure here. It's almost 5 to 1 on Friday in favor of the down volume, along with uh, 2,700, over 2,700 uh, issue, uh, more declining issue than advancing issue, and that is almost 90% of the stock that were traded in the NASDAQ market on Friday. And here looking at the new 52-week high versus 52-week low, you see the number of stock made 52-week low on Friday was 331, and that's a pretty big expansion from the uh, prior days. Right now we are seeing over 200 more 52-week low than 52-week high. So definitely the NASDAQ market is showing some weakness. And here looking at the cumulative AD line, the slope of coming down is pretty steep, similarly to the NASDAQ 100. So again, uh, you know, this AD line, we have this negative diversion that's been uh, persisting for quite a while now. So I wouldn't be surprised that we're going to see the NASDAQ 100 come down to these levels down here sometime in the near future here. So the storyline for the market is that market participants are getting more fearful and they are getting a little bit more bearish now. So we're still looking at a, a little bit more downside because we saw some acceleration of weakness in the advanced decline and also the up-down volume ratio in the uh, New York Stock Exchange as well as in the NASDAQ market. So expect to see a little bit more weakness on the downside, uh, although we could 
see a little bit of a bounce based on that three consecutive down week from the S&P 500 and four consecutive down week from the NASDAQ 100. Looking at these indexes, we notice that the Russell 2000 was a top performer in the month of July, again over 10%, just slightly above 10%. Following by the Dow Jones Industrial and also the Dow Jones Transportation, they both gained a little bit over 4%, and the New York Stock Exchange Composite, 3.79%, uh, while the S&P 500, like I mentioned earlier, gained 1.1%. But the uh, NASDAQ is the uh, weakest market for July. The Composite, the NASDAQ Composite, lost 0.75%, uh, and the NASDAQ 100 lost 1.63%. And for the beginning of August, just the first couple of days, we noticed a reversal of fortune here for the Russell 2000. It uh, actually uh, is the worst performer, and uh, it lost 6.44%. Uh, for the week, it lost 6.67%. The uh, NASDAQ is also the uh, second uh, uh, and third uh, worst performer, following by the transportation, the S&P 500, and the... Uh, uh, New York Stock Exchange and the Dow Jones Industrial, you can see uh, so far for the month of August, all the indexes are down. And for year to date, the S&P 500 is still holding a 12% gain, and the NASDAQ Composite a little bit over 11%, while the NASDAQ 100 just slightly under 10%, and the New York Stock Exchange Composite close to 8%, the Dow Jones Industrial 5.5% or so. The Russell 2000 is still holding a 4% gain, with the transportation being the weakest, and it is uh, holding a loss of three and a quarter of a percent for year to date. Here, looking at the semiconductor sector, we see that the semiconductor sector lost a little bit over five percent. It was the worst performer for the month of July, and so far, month to date, just in August, the first uh, few days of August, it we lost eleven and a half percent. But uh, for year to date, it's still holding a gain of close to 25%. So we see the semiconductor sector finally broke down from this uh, channel here, that ascending channel. And right now, we've got a gap here from Friday. So maybe we see this gap uh, try to get filled. It will come back up and might back test this uh, trend line here on this lower trend line of the price channel. But definitely, we are noticing the semiconductor that used to be the strongest sector and now becoming the weakest sector. And here on the uh, long-term bond, we are seeing long-term bond broken out from this uh, descending trend line here. And right now it's moving up toward this 99 level and looking at the performance here last month, it was up 3.3%. Uh, and so far for the month of August, it's up 3.69%. Although year to day is still losing uh, slightly over half a percent. But definitely this chart here is telling us that the bond market is anticipating for a uh, lower rate to come and expecting the Fed to cut rates soon. Now let's see what we could expect from the uh, SPY, the ETF for the S&P 500 in the near term here. Looking at this chart here, first looking at the weekly uh, chart of the SPY, we see that it is still inside of this long-term price channel here. Although we are seeing this uh, intermediate price channel, it broke down from this channel last week. And if we take a look at on the daily uh, chart basis here on the daily time frame, you see last week we were looking for the SPY to basically uh, retracing this range. And we're saying that this could be a freak out, a uh, head fake that come up, fill this gap, bump up against this uh, low volume zone here on the uh, upper portion of this balance area. And we expect it to uh, come back down, retrace this, and uh, possibly break this uh, balance area, and then look for the uh, 1x uh, retracement, which would bring it down here to uh, 522 area. So you can see that it retraced the entire range last week, and the expected range was uh, uh, between 556 and 531. And here we are looking at the market pricing in. The upper range to be somewhere around 547 and 545. And also the uh, lower range is between 520 and 516. So for the coming week, uh, we'd be uh, looking to see what come up and fill this gap or possibly even come up to backtest this trend line here. 
on the lower trend line of this price channel before it get rejected back down and work itself down here to this low volume area here somewhere around the 525 area and see would it be able to hold it and if it doesn't then we'd be looking at this 1x retracement for the 522 level and possibly come down to this lower range of the expected move between 520 and 516. So we're still looking for this story to play out on this downtrend and continue to pull back and possibly get down to this 490 area. Now also the other thing is if I put in a Fibonacci retracement between this point and the uh, recent high here, okay, we see that it came down to the 50% level last week and it got a nice little bounce off of it. So we'd be expecting it for it to come back up to test this 382, but also I expect it to come back down and take out the 50% uh, retracement. And once it dip below, close below the 50% retracement, then there's a high probability that we could see a 100% retracement all the way back down to this level here to the low. And that would bring it down to somewhere around this 493, 494 area. Now, I'm not saying that it's going to do it in one week, but definitely that's what we will be uh, keeping an eye out for this story to play out in the near term. Now, if you want to see more of this content and see a little bit more detailed analysis of the market, go check out my uh, Substack newsletter at uh, smtraderca.substack.com. So thank you for watching. If you find this video to be informative and useful, be sure to smash the thumbs up to give it a like. And also, if you are new to this channel, click on the subscribe and support this channel. And if you'd like to uh, make a uh, small tip to uh, show your appreciation, go click the link on buy me a coffee in the description below.